So chapter two, that's uh, the nouns, noun declensions. Uh, so which is called Nam Vishnupada Prakaranam. Prakaranam stands for chapter and uh, Vishnupada will learn what is Vishnupada and Nama means noun is called Nama. Okay. Prabhuji, uh, Sarvanam means pronoun, right? I'm sorry? Sarvanam, that means pronoun. Yeah, Sarvanam right. is pronoun. So, Adhatu Vishnu Bhaktikam Arthavan Nama, Sutra 87. This sutra says that any word that has meaning except for Dhatus and Vishnu Bhaktis is called a Nama. So, see, one is we have like nouns, then we have verbs, and then we have suffixes. So, nouns are called nama, verbs are called dhatus, and the suffixes uh, are called Vishnu Bhaktis in Hari Nama Vyakanam, and in general they are called Vibhaktis or Pratyayas. So, here Jiva Goswami giving um, explanation or definition of what is nama. So, he says that any word um, that has a meaning uh, and which is not a dhatu nor Vishnu Bhakti. So that word is called a nama. Okay. So <clears throat> it could be any person, object, and yeah, guna, and so on. Uh, there was one chart actually I would like to show you. Uh, Just a second. Yeah, here if you see. Like, if you see here, then the nouns, Sangya is noun, Sarvanam is the pronoun, and Visheshnas are the modifiers, or they say uh, adjectives. <clears throat> so all of these, they come under the category of nam, nouns. This is verb. This is verb. All of these, they fall under the category of noun. And also the avyayas, uh, also the avyayas are also nouns. Avyayas are those words uh, which remain um, as they are always. They do not, they do not change uh, their form. For example, if you see ch, so ch remains ch always. Never, you will never see something like chaham, or you will never see something like chah, and so on. Ch will remain ch. So that is um, an abhya and other words. So. Yeah, so that was the definition. Then, <clears throat> Prakriti Purva, Sutra 88 and Sutra 99, Pratyaya Param. Okay. Now, the first part of a Vishnupada is called Prakriti. 
and the second part of a Vishnu Pada is called the Pratyaya. So I'll explain you here. <clears throat> so Prakriti and Pratyaya makes up a Vishnu Pada. Now Prakriti is the root word. It can be either a noun or it can be either the verb. And then we have the Pratyaya which are the suffixes. I explained it in the last class on Tuesday. And when we add them, when the declension is done, then we arrive or we derive rather the final form. So that final form is called the Vishnu Pada. So Prakriti is of two kinds. It can be either noun. or verb. Suffixes are of four kinds. Uh, one is the Swadevi Bhaktis, other is the Tibadis, then we have the Kridanta Pratyayas and then we have the Tadhita Pratyayas. Okay. Now, Swadevi Bhaktis are those Suffixes. So basically, they are called the nominal suffixes. Nominal suffixes because these pratyayas or the suffixes are added after the nouns, the root nouns, you know, the nominal. Then the tibadi Vishnu bhaktis are the verbal suffixes. So the suffixes which are added after the root verbal roots, the verbs. And Kridant Krit Pratyas, uh, they are added after after a word. Uh, and then the Tadhita Pratyas are added after a noun. So now in this second chapter, we will deal with this. The Swadi uh, Pratyas. Okay, the Swadi Pratyas. The suffixes which are added after the nouns. Okay. <clears throat> uh, just to show you an example, like, for example, Krishna, you assume. So Krishna is the root word. It's a noun, but in its root form. It's not the final form. So it's that that root form is called prakriti, and this su is the pratyay, the swadi pratyay, one of them. So by adding them, we finally get Krishna. Then example of this is. Let's say Bhu, and then we have the Pratyati. So here Bhu is the verbal root, the Prakriti, and Tip is the verbal suffix, one of them. And then finally, we get Bhavati. How we get Bhavati, that we learn in the chapter, chapter 3. And Krit Pratyati, example for this one is, let's say, we have the Dhatu Kri, and we have the Pratyati, so we get Krita. So Kri, kri is a verb. And Kta is a <coughs> Krit Pratyaya. And we get Krita. Interestingly, now this Krita has become a noun. And then 
an example of this one the fourth category let's take a noun let's say pritha and we add a certain pratyaya of tantita and we get par so here a noun becomes another noun okay so in this chapter we'll deal with this one. we'll have the nominals of nominal base the prakriti and we'll have nominals of axis and we'll make the forms now moving ahead what are those nominal suffixes which are called swadis so they are as follows sutra 90th tatra namnah su aujas am aushas ta bhyam bhis ne bhyam bhis nasi bhyam bhis nas os am ni os sup so the vishnu bhaktis so vishnu bhaktis i have explained you the suffixes are called vibhaktis in general uh, or they are also called pratyayas uh, but here in jiva goswami sari rama mrit vyakaranam the vibhaktis are called vishnu bhaktis to make it you know krishnaized so the vishnu bhaktis applied after a nama a noun are as follows they are as follows i'll show you the table here so they are 21 in number and so yeah here here they are you can say after me you, you can keep muted and just repeat after me <clears throat> su au jas am au shas ta bhyam bhis ne bhyam bhis masi bhyam bhis nas os am ni os sup till here only so these are 21 pratyayas of the suffixes i have memorized them properly mm, okay good so everyone has to memorize these 21 pratyayas because the whole chapter the second chapter will be depending on these 21 uh pratyas so we are we'll have to memorize them <clears throat> okay so su aujas am aushas ta bhyam bhis ne bhyam bhis nasi bhyam bhis nas os am ni os so you see we have different columns and different rows here so we have different uh, columns according to singular indicating singularity duality and plurality you know and then we have these rows seven eight rows here indicating different uh, cases i will explain what are cases ahead so for the timing you have to memorize these 21 pratyas by tomorrow it would be good actually okay now there will be one question in your mind that why in this table actually it would be good if you write this table right now in your notebook or in your, in your notes you can look at here look at the screen and write so yeah take 5 minutes and write the whole table please would be good for the memory Reading. Please write.
Okay, so next thing is we might be wondering what are these like brackets doing here? You know, if you see here around U, J, Sh, and so on. Few letters here. And why? So, what is the usage basically? So, one thing is that um, when we are doing the declension, when we are adding these suffixes uh, with the root word and doing the declension, declen doing the declension meaning making them into the final form. So, these letters in these brackets, they are removed. They are not like used there. Then the point would be, what is the usage of these letters then? So first of all, these letters, in brackets, they are called the indicatory letters. Uh, indicatory letters. And the usages are, so there are three usages. First, first user is pronunciation. P, P stands for pronunciation. For example, if you remove this U, the U, can you just pronounce this sir? This is not English as this is a sir. We can't do that. We have to have some Sarveshwara following uh, in order to pronounce this sir. So we have this U here. So we get Su. So first point is for the sake of the pronunciation. Then second point is uh, to make a difference difference. D stands for difference. To make a difference between two same looking you know, pratyas. For example, if you see here, this a, this and this, they are same. Uh, if you remove this j and sh, right? They look same, us and us. How do we differ between the two? So we have this j here and here we have this sh. So j and sh. So to create a difference. Then the third point is, so on the basis of these indicatory letters, sutras will, so there will be operations ahead, like formulas ahead, uh, execution of which will be depending on um, these indicatory letters. So they will depend on these indicatory letters for their, yeah, for the formula to happen, to take place, to, ex to be executed. Not all, not all the places, some places. So for the application of rules ahead. So three reasons why these indicatory letters are used. One is for the sake of pronunciation, second, to make a difference. And third, uh, for what application of the rules. Okay. Professor Drabram, could you please explain again uh, for the application of the rules? I did not grasp uh, how, yeah. how does it facilitate? The yeah, 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 yeah. So, for example, there, there might be rule saying uh, <clears throat> okay so so okay all the pratyas with the indicatory letter ng okay they are called vrishnis in harinama mrityakana vrishnis Now, there will be rule ahead that if Vrishni follows, then we will delete something or we will add something, insert something, or, or we will substitute something. See, you see, so when we say Vrishni follows, then it means either of these Pratya is following. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor. Now, now I see. 
Yeah. For instance, this is what uh, need is in uh, Pani, yes, or? Uh, I don't know about Pani, we'll have to oh, Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, so like that. I can share a file where the equivalents are given for Panini and Harinamanath Vyakranam. So I can share that file I have. Anyhow, so, and then we have, there are four kinds of Namas. Uh, depending on the genders. So first kind is the Punlinga, the masculine gender, words in masculine gender. So the nouns, they are they lie in different genders. Right? All the words they are categorized into different genders. So genders are of three kinds. One is masculine, feminine and neuter. So masculine is generally known as Punglinga, but in Harinama with Vyakranam, it is known as Purushottam Linga. Then the feminine is generally called Sri Linga. In Harinama with it is called Lakshmi Linga. And the third one is Neuter, which is Napunsaka Linga in general, and Brahma Linga in Harinama with Vyakranam. And there is also one fourth kind, uh, which is like, uh, which is Avyaya. So it is called Avyaya, all the places, Avyaya. Uh, so your homework uh, an urgent kind of homework is you will have to memorize this whole set of prayers 21 in numbers this last one uh, you can memorize but they are the same as the first row actually so just and so just so these are actually 21 in number so do memorize this by tomorrow please because otherwise there will be no use of moving ahead without memorizing these pratyas. Okay. So, and also tomorrow I'll share the result, the marks. Maybe. So today we'll stop here. Uh, anything here for this chapter? Uh, this is a new thing. Yeah, I have a doubt. Uh, you were you were mentioning about Vrishnis, right? Um, that only refers to these uh, four Ekavachanas, right? Uh, 